How's it going guys? Today we are back out here working on this corral fence. If you're just joining the channel last weekend, I had to do a lot of pruning out here to get these branches out of the way so that I could get in here to work. But the goal here is to get this old wood and barbed wire fence torn down and replace it with steel pipe. I've got all the steel and the concrete that I need to rebuild this into my my nice five pipe fence that I've sort of been slowly but surely uh, building around this corral. But I wanted to make sure that I had everything before I got started because the first thing that I need to do in this job is tear this old fence down. And once we do that, we are committed. We have to get it done. So that's the goal for today. Let's get started. Because I do still have some animals in the corral today and I don't have them blocked off of this area I think the first thing that I'll do is just start taking the boards down because I have the barbed wire here uh, even with the boards down they they're not gonna be able to get out of this area once I get to the point where I need to take wire down I'm gonna have to chase everybody out of here and get them down in a different field but some of these boards have been replaced over the years and they're actually not half bad this is a good example right here so I want to try to salvage as much of this as I can because, uh, and, and again, some of these posts, I mean, I think there, there's maybe some life left in there. Uh, with the price of building materials now, you just really can't afford to just throw this stuff in the burn pile and get rid of it. And I've got kind of an idea of what I might like to do with these things. Um, we'll kind of get, we might get into that a little bit later, but for now, Let's start tearing these boards down and yeah, I'll quit talking. Ah. Well. I've got about half of the boards down now and you can tell that the cows are really starting to notice that there is something changing in their world right now and they're they got to take a look at it and try to figure it out <laughs> i've got irrigation water running while i'm doing this and i think it's about time for it to change so i'm going to take a little break from this run out there check that the way that my grandpa judged the water in this backfield is he said that when it reached this pole here you could shut the valve off because the water will keep pushing for a little while after you uh, close it off so i've got two that are past that pole they're definitely done and the other two look like they need to go a little while longer The way that my irrigation system works out here is I have these valves, actually, let me point you this way, all along what is called the top of the field. And I've got checks that go down the length of the field. Now the field slightly falls that way. That's why where we're standing now is called the top. Down there would be the bottom because there is a very gentle slope that directs the water that way. The slope in this field from the top where we're standing down to the bottom where we were just checking the water is so gradual that as the water travels down there, it moves so slowly that it does have a chance to soak into the, that ground. It doesn't just run off of the top. That's how we irrigate. Thank you. 
All right, now back to work. Well, that's going to do it for boards. Uh, after taking all of those off, it makes me feel a lot better about uh, going ahead with the decision to put this into metal. I was kind of on the fence because, you know, the, the cost of the materials is so high, but I mean, the cost of wood is pretty high too. So, I mean, at least building the metal fence, yeah, it, it hurts a little bit now, but in the long run, it's going to be better. When I started pulling boards off of the fence, I was making a pile right here behind me. But then I had the bright idea of stacking the boards on the fence. This way I can come back with my loader tractor and the forks and just pick all these up and take them down to the burn pile. Unfortunately, I was not really able to salvage as many as I was hoping. These are really old um, and they're just, they're brittle and you know, breaking easily. There, there's a few like literally like three or four good ones. Uh, but the rest of them are, are junk. Speaking of how old and brittle those boards are, has got me wondering now exactly how old this fence is. I remember helping grandpa build it, uh, but I was probably like in elementary school at that time. So I'm gonna say maybe nine or 10 years old. So that, that would make this fence 26, almost 27 years old. Uh, so I think we got our money's worth out of it. It's kind of funny though as I kind of think back on that time when we built this together one thing that sticks in my head for some reason is that I remember as I was helping or I thought I was helping I was probably slowing him down more than anything but I had this great idea that since all the posts kind of looked like this when we were rebuilding it I thought that when we put the new posts in, we should lean them in a little bit. So over time, as the cows pushed on them, they'd straighten up and, and you know, when the fence got really old, the posts would be straight. I thought it was genius. Grandpa didn't think so though. He wanted them straight to begin with, so that's what we did. off the posts now and with the wire and all the boards removed I was able to knock five posts down by hand they were completely rotted off and I think the wire and the boards were the only things holding them up with that being said there's still 14 posts here that need to come out and they're a little bit more stubborn so I think I'm gonna go trade the Honda for the old Ford loader tractor and we'll see if we can't pop these things out
Well, I got all these fence posts pulled out of here. A couple of them fought me pretty hard, but if I rock the tractor back and forth enough, I was able to, to uh, pop them out of the hole or a couple of them just broke off, which is honestly not that big of a deal as long as they didn't just so happen to break off exactly where I need to drill a new fence post hole. Next out here, I need to get out here with a box scraper and sort of knock this edge down. I don't know how well it's gonna show on camera, but like where I'm standing right here is probably about 18 inches lower than the old corral line there. So <clears throat> over the years, I think just manure and everything has built up here. And you know, this is like the best time to get in here with a box scraper and pull this out. In fact, it, it, it'll be the only time in my life that it'll be this easy. So I gotta take advantage. And once we do that, I can stretch my string here and start measuring and marking where my fence post holes need to go. Drill the holes, set the post, weld the pipe. You know, it's, it all sounds easy when you list it out like that. It's the next day now and obviously I've got the new Holland over here at the ranch and I need to move some dirt around. So let's get to it. I'm starting to get down into what I would refer to as a base now. The ground is getting really solid and the bucket is just not really able to pick up much more of it. As I look at this, I don't feel like I've moved that much dirt, but then when I look in the pile that I made, yeah, I, I guess I did move some. There's definitely still a slope down to the yard, but like I said, that doesn't really matter as long as we've got um, some good solid ground to put our posts into, then we'll be fine. After getting this scraped off, one problem that I am now afraid I'm going to have is I've got a lot of roots here right in line with where the new fence is going to go. So I'm thinking when I try to drill these holes, I might have some issues with the auger getting hung up on the roots. If it's just these little ones, that's not going to be a big deal. But if I happen to hit some big ones, eh, then we could have some problems. The next step is to take this tractor back home. I'll come back out here with my string my tape measure and some marking paint and start figuring out where all of these posts are gonna go. Now that I have all my marks on the ground where my posts will go, I do another step here that I'm not sure everyone does. I think this is something that I kind of came up with. No one really showed me this, but it helps make digging these holes with a three point digger by yourself a lot easier. What I do is I take a pin or in this case, a big bolt and I will pound it into the ground right where the post is going to go. And then I'll sort of, uh, 
wiggle it around like that and what this accomplishes is it makes a nice size divot perfectly where you want it so that when you place the auger bit on the post hole digger onto the ground you have a good target to aim for and having that divot there actually will help that auger stay centered where you want it while you're digging. Well, the old fence is gone, the ground is all prepped, all of the new post holes have been marked, the string is up. The only thing that's really left to do is to hook that digger up to the tractor and get it out here and start digging these holes. But that is going to have to wait for another video. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Mm -hmm.